Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are getting to know butter pearls. These were a gift from Simply Ingredients. Their website is beautiful, packed full of super helpful information. And yeah, the description for these had me very excited to give them a try and become better acquainted. I haven't done anything with butter pearls yet, so I thought I would take you along with me as I get to know this really promising new ingredient. Let's get started. Butter pearls are a fatty thickener like cetyl alcohol, cetyryl alcohol, and stearic acid. If you have watched my deep dives into those ingredients, you'll know how wonderful and versatile they are. Today's get to know butter pearls experiment is an updated version of the experiment I do every time I get a new thickener or hardener. I highly recommend that you do experiments like this too. They're a brilliant way to get to know your ingredients. So today I'm going to be melting up seven different blends of butter pearls with safflower oil. We'll be making 2%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 30%, and 40% mixtures. I'll weigh the butter pearls and safflower oil for each blend into a wee prep cup, and then each sample will be melted in a water bath. Once each mixture has melted, I will stir it as it cools until it reaches a thick trace, and then leave it to sit overnight. With each sample, I'll be looking at how thick it is and how it feels on the skin. Slip, playtime, melting speed, and any other characteristics I notice. I've compressed all my observations into just a single pass for each ratio, but I did sample them blend several times over a few days to make sure I got a good feel for how they behave and settle. We'll begin with the 2% mixture. You can see that it's a bit cloudy, but definitely still liquid. It's a little bit more viscous than straight safflower oil. Over the following three days, that cloudiness did start to settle out, just like stearic acid, cetyryl alcohol, and cetyl alcohol will do in similarly thin mixtures. And this seems to indicate indicate that butter pearls aren't a great option for adding just a wee bit of viscosity to a liquid oil. This blend feels smooth, rich, and satiny on the skin. It's really quite nice. It's got good slip and play time, and I think this could make a nice massage product. Up next, we'll take a look at the 5% mixture. This blend is somewhere between a thick liquid and an extremely soft solid. Before stirring, it doesn't move, but once you stir it up, it creates soft oil gel foldy peaks that then relax back into the dish. It has a slightly apple saucy, uneven appearance, but feels smooth on the skin. And introducing a just a wee bit of body heat to the mixture makes a really big difference in the viscosity. It loosens up quite a lot with fairly minimal handling. There's a very noticeable boost in richness from the 2% mixture with good slip and a nice rich skin feel that still has good playtime. In later observations, I noticed that a dollop of this mixture on the skin melts quickly, but it doesn't liquefy and start running down my arm or my leg. Instead, it maintains a bit of structure, which I think is quite interesting. Here is the 10% mixture. Like the 5% mixture, the 10% blend doesn't move much when it hasn't been stirred. But once it's been stirred up, this mixture is somewhere between a very, very thick liquid and a super soft solid. As with the 5% blend, I think a very warm day could tip this into fully liquid territory. The skin feel for this blend is soft to the touch with a smooth, rich, creamy, and buttery feel, and still quite good playtime on the skin. In later observations where I didn't stir it up a bunch before diving in, I noticed that it doesn't liquefy quickly when massaged into the skin, you do need to move it around a bit first. And like the 5% blend, it has a slightly mealy appearance, but feels smooth on the skin. This one is the 15% blend. As with the 5 and 10% blends, this mixture appears solid to start with, but then gets quite soft when it's been stirred around. It is glossy and malleable with a more noticeably creamy feel than previous versions. As these blends get more rich and creamy, the slip does start to taper off as that creaminess factor goes up. This next mixture is 20% butter pearls, and this is the first mixture I describe as a clear soft solid. We are hitting that promised soft buttery territory. You'll also notice that this is the first blend that didn't settle back into the dish to create a flat surface after I stopped stirring. If you press a finger into this mixture, it'll leave a noticeable dent behind. It's got a really soft, pillowy feel with a noticeable white cast on rub-in. I did notice a bit of that white cast with a 15% blend, but it's quite noticeable here. I'd be interested to see if that white cast happens with different liquid carrier oils. This blend has a really definite, rich, creamy, buttery feel on the skin. Playtime continues to decrease, and as creaminess increases, we start to get a bit of tackiness as well. I'm also starting to notice a bit of a powdery feel on the skin towards the end of the rub-in dry-down that I 
I didn't notice with earlier mixtures and I quite like it. This mixture leaves the skin looking satiny but not really shiny or greasy or oily. This is our second last blend, our 30% mixture. It appears dry, fluffy and kind of crumbly and it's quite a lot harder than the 20% version. When you start working with it, it comes up in dry looking chunks that are malleable and squishable between two fingers. This mixture reminds me of a harder shea butter. It has a very noticeably white rubbin that kind of looks like a low creamy lather, but it feels very rich and buttery and not at all waxy. It's still got pretty good slip movement and playtime, less than the lower concentrations, but that does fit with the pattern we're seeing here. I think that this level of butter pearls could work to solidify a formulation for a hot pour into a push-up stick type packaging. And lastly, this is our 40% blend. And of course it is the hardest one yet. It appears quite dry and it is definitely solid. I can't stir it with a spatula at all. When I press the mixture with a finger, little chunks of it snap off rather than my finger pressing into the blend. If I take one of those little snapped off chunks between my fingers, I can smush that up and start working it around, but it is very slow to soften and melt. That whiteness on rubbin is definitely still happening here but it is very creamy, rich, and buttery feeling. And this mixture has relatively slippy skin feel for how firm it is with a pleasant, powdery dry down. I think this mixture would be useful for people living in hotter climates. It's probably a bit much for my ambient temperature of about 21 degrees Celsius. Okay, so here's what I learned about butter pearls during this experiment. The way that butter pearls thicken formulations is really unique and I think quite useful. You end up with products that are quick to soften but slow to fully melt or liquefy. This means that the products keep their structure to a degree as they're applied. So I think that could be really useful, especially in cosmetic formulations because you can still kind of steer them, but they will spread. Post-testing, so you know, after I'd put a bunch of butter pearly goodness on my hands, my hands still felt soft and conditioned even after washing them, which is a big part of the reason I kept going back and retesting and rechecking. I really liked that ongoing, soft, protected, conditioned feel though, and I think there's lots of great skincare applications for that. Compared with subtle alcohol, butter pearls add a lot more richness and are slower to melt. Compared to stearic acid, butter pearls create formulations that have better slip and aren't quite as hard. Compared to 70-30 cetyryl alcohol, butter pearls thicken to a similar level, but I find that butter pearls create a richer, creamier mixture, while cetyryl alcohol creates formulations that are more slippy and oily. With all that in mind, I think a potential substitution for butter pearls could be a blend of cetyryl alcohol and stearic acid, though you'd have to do some experimenting to figure out how much of each works for you and your formulation. Don't forget to read the full partner blog post for this experiment, linked in the description box below, for a quick written reference and a handy dandy chart of my findings. What do you wanna make with butter pearls? Let me know in the comments below. Want to learn more about rich and creamy stearic acid? Click here. And want to learn more about similar but slippier satyral alcohol? Click here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.